arcade heroes. Greetings, it's Adam with ArcadeHeroes.com, and it's time for an update on business, on my arcade business. And so if you're new to the channel, I own and operate an arcade in West Valley City, Utah called Arcade Galactic. I've posted a number of videos about this uh, over the past couple of years, uh, talking about the business itself, and this is kind of a follow-up to that. Uh, most recently, I discussed... Uh, closing down my second location at the very end of 2022 which was in Ogden Utah and so what I'm following up with here is how has business been since I infused all these new games into the mix and so figured some of you might be interested in that since I know that there are some who like to get into the weeds so to speak as to how the arcade business works and so um, I can't remember the exact number of games that I had at this original location prior to uh, the move but I added 17 total games to the mixture and so if on my website arcadegalactic.com I have this uh, all these arcade flyers and a few instances I've had to make up my own thing since there isn't a flyer for it. There's not too many companies doing flyers anymore and so uh, <laughs> that's where you just have to put your art skills to the test. But um, of the 17 titles that I added were, let's see, House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn by Sega. Luigi's Mansion Arcade, also by Sega. Step Maniacs by Step Revolution. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles by Raw Thrills. Pac-Man Battle Royale by Bandai Namco. Re-Rave by Step Revolution. Batman by Raw Thrills. Time Crisis 3 by Namco. The X Arcadia 4-player model. I already had a 2-player model at this location. The Jurassic Park pinball the pro model by stern guardians of the galaxies pro by stern although i like to call it pro plus with some of the mods that it has a terminator 3 by stern star trek premium by stern marvel vs. capcom 2 by capcom of course street fighter 2 this would be champion edition i already had super street fighter 2 turbo at the location but now i have two Street Fighter <laughs> games. I, I do have a Street Fighter 3 Second Impact board sitting around somewhere. I'd like to convert one of them over to that so I have a Street Fighter 2 and a 3. I have a 4 board as well, but it hasn't worked in years. Uh, and then Niren by Namco, and then Pac Man 25th Anniversary by Namco. And so, how have I seen business change since bringing them in? It was about the end of January when I brought them in. Well, it's been a noticeable improvement. I would say every weekend, we are, it should be Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we've seen somewhere around 20 to 30% more business than we would see on average on weekends prior to that. And interestingly enough, uh, that's kind of along the lines of how much we were making up in Ogden, as obviously the reason I closed Ogden was because it wasn't doing too hot. It wasn't bringing in that much money and or not enough to really warrant staying open. And especially with the tax bill that I just had to pay, <laughs> it's been an interesting change as to what's happened in by adding more equipment now over the many many years I have consulted and advised a lot of people for free on opening up a new arcade business and I've said that with arcades both quality and quantity matter now quality it seems like an easy one where the better games that you have then they're going to draw in more people to play them but quality really shouldn't be discounted in this business because when somebody is coming into an arcade I mean sometimes they'll research what it is beforehand and they'll decide beforehand if they want to go to a place like mine or one of the competing arcades in the area uh, but some people are really just 
stuck on one game. They not, aren't really maybe interested in the 60 or 70 or so games that I have sitting around. That Just one of them appeals to them. And particularly where I'm in a mall where I get a lot of random foot traffic where somebody's just walking by, they see an arcade. It's like, oh, wow, I haven't seen an arcade in a while. Let me go see what they got. And then they'll have something in mind that they hope to find within their search. And... So if you have quantity, the chances of them finding that game that they're really, really into increases. And this is something that I've known for a long time because when I started this arcade back in the summer of 2008, I started with around 25 games, maybe a few under that. And for a while, it wasn't my arcade games that was bringing people in. It was the little PC LAN <laughs> center that I had also set up that really was bringing business uh, at that point. And so uh, as I've been able to expand slowly over the years, I've been able to increase the overall profit of the arcade just because there's more stuff that's here that appeals to more people. And of course, in retrospect, are there certain games that I wish I would have started with? Oh, absolutely. I would have had a dance game like DDR from the get-go, which I didn't have until like 2015. I would have had some basketball arcade machines, which I didn't have until maybe it was 2016, 2017 around there. Um, and, and, and then a few other uh, different decisions that I would have made in that regard. But, yeah, by having more of those things, then, again, I'm able to appeal to a wider audience. And there are plenty of regulars who I know who they are and know them by name. I know exactly what they'll play every time they come in. I have some people who will come in and will only play Big Buck Hunter or only play Miss Pac-Man or only play Maximum Tune 5, etc., uh, etc. Et and so, yeah, there are certain games that really will bring certain people in to play all the time. But for the most part, I would say a good chunk of my daily intake is just coming from people who are just here at the mall for some other reason to eat or go see a movie or shopping or something else and they have some time to kill and they may not necessarily be hung up on well I'm going to go and play Donkey Kong every single day uh, or Pac-Man uh, like I've had some regulars do and so that is why quantity matters now of course one downside to quantity is that uh, if you're focused on a smaller arcade at first you'll notice that there will be games which take in maybe a certain amount of money that is pretty consistent uh, but when you start adding more stuff then that might start going down and that's normal just because once you have more to do in an arcade it's going to be spread out and particularly if you have a lot of games that are, fit within the same genre like say light gun games the more light gun games you add then a lot of the income is going to spread out amongst them but by having plenty of quality light gun games it gives people more of a choice and so it just will overall buoy up everything if that makes sense what I'm saying but Part of this, uh, the, the reason I'm bringing this up is because I was interested in seeing, well, how is it that by bringing in some of these other heavy hitters like House of the Dead, Scarlet Dawn, and Luigi's Mansion Arcade, how are they going to compare to the existing big arcade machines that I already had like Walking Dead and Jurassic Park Arcade? And uh, this, I was very curious about this just because uh, all of these games are what you could call deluxe or environmental cabinets. So they're cabinets that people sit inside of to play. And having two of them already seemed like a lot for a location like mine, which is only about 3,000 square feet. And now having four <laughs> makes things a bit more cramped. Um, but I was also very curious to see how they would do uh, earnings-wise. And so um, after bringing these games in at the very end of January. That's where I, and now that it's April, I have a pretty good idea of where they fall on the overall scheme of things. Now, out of all the games that I brought down from Ogden, the top three would be House of the Dead, Luigi's Mansion, and Step Maniacs. And I, I didn't look at all of the games to see how they've been performing to see you know, what they were from 1 to 17. But uh, those 
three were definitely the top earners overall. And then uh, with House of the Dead, it made close to $800 in February, a little over $1,000 in March, and April's not finished yet, but it's already done over $400. Now, one thing for me to note is April is always, historically, as one of the slowest months of the year. There, there's two months of the year that are very, very slow for me. That's April and September. Sometimes May can be a bit slow just because it seems like people are so focused on school that they're just not really going out. Um, but it also just depends on how the month works out with when school's getting out and stuff like that. Um, spring break also has an effect on things like the spring break happening in March this year. It's uh, at the, near the end of March, really boosted March. Um, of course, it usually happens in March around this time anyways, but this March was pretty good for us. Uh, Luigi's Mansion did um, a little bit under 600 in February, uh, did almost 800 in March, and then 369 in April so far. I had been expecting it to be a little higher uh, just with the Super Mario Brothers movie, um, but of course with April just being a little bit slower, it's hard to say, but it has been um, going up on its averages uh, for plays. And then The Walking Dead. And so in January, when it was by itself as the only zombie game here, it did uh, 691. But in February, where it had to compete with House of the Dead, where House of the Dead did 792, uh, Walking Dead did 675. And then in March, did 978. And April, so far, it's done 283. And so it's actually been sliding down quite a bit. And so that's been interesting to see. So it looks like so far House of the Dead is holding off strong against The Walking Dead. <laughs> and then, but despite all that, Jurassic Park Arcade by Raw Thrills is still one of the best games that you can have. If there's anybody out there that's watching this, that's looking into getting into the arcade business, get a Jurassic Park Arcade. The game, even though it came out in 2015, it does phenomenally well. And so just for some numbers to give you an idea, what I see now, of course, just again, this is mine. I don't know how this does elsewhere, uh, but I'm pretty sure it still does pretty well. But uh, most other numbers, if you were to get the d numbers from Dave and Buster's around one USA or anywhere else, they'd probably be much, much higher than mine. Uh, <laughs> so take that for what it's worth. In January, it did $845, which is quite a bit above The Walking Dead. And then in February, it did $852, which is not a big jump above that, uh, but still more than House of the Dead Luigi's or The Walking Dead. In March, it did $1,271, so it also beat out all the others. And in April so far, it's also ahead at $509 currently. And funny thing is, is that it is at the very back of my arcade now. Uh, instead of being straight up front, Luigi's is right up front. And yet it's being okay, but it's not doing as well as Jurassic Park. And so that just goes to show just how powerful that license is, how powerful it is to have a good, solid dinosaur shooting game uh, that it will draw people in and so uh, <laughs> congrats to uh, Jurassic Park on that but but still again amongst the two zombie games it looks like House of the Dead Scarlet Dawn edges out The Walking Dead so far and of course it does have a few more features than The Walking Dead does the games are back to back and so there's nothing I think that really matters about placement there but um, yeah, it has wind effects and uh, rumble seat, which is pretty cool, uh, and better graphics and stuff, but it did come out a year or two after The Walking Dead did. And so, uh, yeah, those, uh, that's the overall better performance of my arcade by having more stuff here. Now, because of the debt that I'm in <laughs> from the Ogden location and all that. I've not been looking at getting a lot of new stuff. Uh, I'd really like to get to a card system at this point as to make life a little bit easier than doing coins on everything. But um, that's going to have to wait. I did sell off my Dance Dance Revolution Extreme machine uh, as I got 
a great deal for it, and that was just impossible to pass up. I would have been stupid to pass it up. And so um, I took that money that I got from that, and I bought the House of the Gun Dead, or sorry, Enter the Gungeon House of the Gun Dead, which hopefully will be here sometime at the beginning of May, I, I guess, from what I'm hearing. Possibly end of April, but beginning of May most likely and I also decided to get Donut Dodo Do or Donut Dodo Do <laughs> for the XR Arcadia and uh, as I really enjoyed that one and I think my customers will like that and uh, give it some play so those are the only new things that I have planned on the horizon I don't have anything else otherwise it's just I need to focus on paying down debt but uh, yeah those are some numbers more business stuff and so uh, let me know if you got any more questions, any more insight you'd like me to discuss about the arcade business and whatnot, what I think about it, and uh, be happy to discuss it. And so thanks for watching this one, and we'll catch you on the next video.